right, we're starting with solving equations with just one step, two step, and then we'll see at what point do you get stuck and do you need some assistance? So here we've got a plus seven. So opposite of plusing seven is going to be minusing seven. Here we've got a plus four. So opposite of plus four is going to be, oh, sorry, minusing four. Opposite of minus four is plus four. All right, now it's getting into the two steps where we first need to add and then we need to divide. All right, next one's just a one stepper dividing by three, but negative divide by positive is a negative times three to both sides to get rid of that denominator negative times a positive is a negative okay solving multi steps and these letters now are going to change a little bit so we're going to minus one y to both sides and then add the constant to the other side How'd you do? Uh, combining like terms, we've got five X's plus six X's. That's 11. 11 minus two is nine X's. On the right, we're gonna be able to combine negative 18 plus 12 minus six. So that's gonna make negative six minus six. Now we move the X's to the other side. All right, this one requires some distributing. Careful with your signs. Seven minus 15 is a negative eight. A lot of students asked me about this one because it comes out to a fraction of 16, 6. I can divide 16 by 2 and divide 6 by 2 and get a reduced fraction of 8 thirds. Times in both sides by negative 3. Times in both sides by five. Oops, twelve. One third of ten is top times top, bottom times bottom. One third of x. And so whenever we have all these denominators of one third or even from the original step, we can multiply everything by three to get rid of that denominator. So it goes bye bye here, bye bye here, leaves us 10 plus X equals three X because this also needs to multiply with the end there. Three minus X is just two X. Divide by 2 and x equals 5. Next, um, so again, do we want to apply this before we distribute or after? It's literally up to you, but I would get 5 6 x minus 26. That's top times top over bottom. And then 1 half x minus 
half of two is just one. So now if I want to get rid of this denominator of six and two, I'm going to multi every, multiply everything by six. Six times five, six. Six times negative 26. Two goes into six three times. Three times one. And then six times negative one. Now I move the x's. Now we add 20, oops, sorry, this equation isn't very nice, hang on. All right, now we add the 20. Okay. <clears throat> half of x, half of 5, multiplying everything by 2 to get rid of that denominator. Those cross out. This crosses out. 2 times that, 2 times that. Okay, this one to get rid of the 3, the 4, and the 2, our common factor would be a 12. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 goes into 12 four times. 2 goes into 12 six times. All right, now these next ones are set up as cross multiplication. Do you remember this, where we multiply this and then we multiply the other diagonal, we set them equal, multiply this, set it equal to the other diagonal. All right, let's do a couple of these and see if you remember. All right, so we would go like the green one first, five times the numerator x plus four is equal to 3 times x plus 6. So you're doing the first diagonal, you multiply it equal to the second diagonal. Okay, next one, pause the video, try the cross multiply. Let's see how you did. Okay, in a triangle, the measure of the middle angle uh, is triple the measure of the smallest angle. So we're going to call that the smallest angle. That's triple the smallest. And the measure of the largest is 55 greater than the smallest. Find the measure of the angles. So we know that the angles of a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. So I've got S plus S plus 3S, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 S's. And 
and then off to the side, we'll do 180 minus 55. All right, so that means that the smallest angle is 25 degrees. The medium or middle angle is 3 times 25, so 75 degrees. And the next one, small plus 55. So the largest angle is 80 degrees. Did you remember that angles add up, that triangles add up to 180, or was that new for you? A square and a rectangle have the same perimeter. Find the side lengths of each figure. So if it's a square, all of these are x plus 1. So there's four x plus 1s, and they're telling us that it's equal to this. So equal to 2 of the x minus 1s and 2 of the 2x minus 3s. All right, so find the lengths of the sides of each figure. Just because x is 6, that's not our answer. For this one, the sides of the triangle, they're x plus 1. So I take my answer of 6, and I do 6 plus 1. So the sides of the square are 7. Then over here, it's 6 minus 1. So this would be 5, this would be 5. And then it's 2x minus 3. This would be 9 and this would be 9. There you go. There's our actual side lengths after we plug that 6 back in. Backyard has a perimeter of 144. If the backyard is square, what are the dimensions? And so four side lengths, we don't know what that length is, equals 144. So the side lengths are each 36. If the backyard is rectangular and the length is 3 times the width, what are the dimensions? So there's 2 of the 3 W's and 2 of the W's. All right, so if the width is 18, then the length is 3 times 18. Or 54. So we would say 54 by 18 are the dimensions of the rectangle. And up here, the square is a 36 by 36 square because all the side lengths are equal. Okay, how'd you do? Is that all the problems? Yep.